was getting a bunch of happy birthday messages on my birthday and a couple of the messages were like, man, happy birthday. I'm so happy for all of your success. I can't wait to get like you uh, one day and reach my goals. And I thought about that and I was like, man, a lot of people that reached out to me, I have a lot of friends that are much younger than me. They're like in their 20s, I'm 41. And I immediately thought, why would you want to get like me? I'm 41 years old. If anything, I want to get like you. you know, you're in your 20s, you've got your whole life ahead of you, you can choose any path that you want and you want to be me at the age of 41, married, two kids, you know, my kind of career path is set, kind of know what to expect. I mean, obviously there are things I'm looking forward to in life and continuing to grow and progress in my own life, but I've only got so many years left, it's limited. When you're in your 20s, you've got everything ahead of you. So why would you want to get like me? What I gleaned from that message is like, I can't wait for the future to take off like you. Well, why are you waiting for the future to take off like me? You can take off like me right now. And the way I kind of explained it was, I, I kind of used my own business as an analogy. So in my business, at my law firm, we have daily goals that we want to achieve. And if we achieve those daily goals, then we will achieve our weekly goals. And if we achieve our weekly goals, we will achieve our monthly goals. We achieve our monthly goals, then we will achieve our quarterly goals. If we achieve our quarterly goals, then we will achieve our annual goals. So it all starts from the day. It, fuck tomorrow, fuck yesterday, and focus on today. And if you make today happen, all the things that you wanted to do today, if all of those things happen, then you're set up for tomorrow. And then if you do everything that you're supposed to do tomorrow, then you're set up for the next day and so on and so on. And as you're achieving those daily goals, you will just start accumulating everything that you hope to achieve. And that's how you should live your life. The chances of your, your mom and your dad getting together, fucking birthing you, I don't know what those odds are, but they're astronomical. So just being alive is a miracle in and of itself. So you're already winning. So now you've just got to take that mindset, apply winning every single day. Everything else that you want will naturally follow along. And I wouldn't say that it just comes to your falls into your lap. What it is, is a testament to you putting in that grind on a daily basis. All right, so you guys see Rocket My Supreme Box logo hat. I love Supreme Box logos. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you know what the fuck this is. This is the Supreme Box logo. Once, just an underground skate brand, only known by the skate community, but it has now reached the masses. It's a household brand name. Everybody knows, not just skaters, but old fogies like me, soccer moms like April, we rock supreme too, so it's just everywhere. It's a completely different brand than what it was when I was in high school in 1994 and in the 90s as it is today. And I'm super proud of them. Like it's amazing to watch something just really small that connected to like a niche community just become so accepted and mainstream, just become globally recognized. There's something really crazy about that to be able to create something that so many people in the world identify with can't take anything away from Supreme for doing that. Let's talk about this um, logo. It's the, it uses um, Futura Bold Oblique, uh, the white font with the red rectangular box. Everybody knows what it is. The guy who founded Supreme, his name is James Jebia, 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 not really sure. So he first introduced this very minimalist logo during a time when skate, skate clothing, skate shops were creating very loud, very gaudy, garish type of clothing. And out comes Supreme, just plain blank white shirt, plain blank black shirt, putting that clean box logo on there. And it just connected with the skate community. 
actually started buying it also because the price point was very affordable. I think it was like $20 for a t-shirt. That popularity just starts to snowball and snowball and snowball and now it's become the massive juggernaut that we know of as Supreme now. It is the hype beast brand. Shit, it might be even more than that, you know, probably. They make so much shit now and everybody knows it. You try to go to Supreme, there's always a line. That right there, that's a line and a half, bro. Bro, it don't even stop, it keeps going. That's a different line. It's incredible that they've come this far. And you know what? It's probably just starting. It's probably gonna get to a whole other level in another 10 years. So where did, where did James Jebbia get this idea from? Although he has never acknowledged himself, if you were to take a look at Barbara Kruger's art, you would say, he was definitely influenced by Kruger's art. There is no question. It's the same font, the same look, same aesthetic. I'm pretty sure Supreme, basically, they made a living by lifting Barbara Kruger's art. Just take one look at her art, take one look at Supreme's shit. There is no question that Barbara Kruger influenced Supreme. So here's the irony. A company that's famous for using unlicensed images, parodying, appropriating, straight up stealing, you know, designs, whatever you want to call it, they decide in 2013 that they're going to file a lawsuit against Married to the Mob for copyright infringement. I think Married to the Mob probably did like a shirt box logo, it says Married to the Mob, you know, like in the Supreme font, Barbara Kruger style, whatever you want to call it. For three decades of Supreme being influenced and lifting Barbara Kruger's art and using it, you know, in their creative design. Not once did Kruger file a lawsuit, let alone threaten to file a lawsuit for copyright infringement. And as an attorney, I would say that in my professional opinion, Barbara has a legitimate claim against Supreme. Kruger being the super dope artist that she is though, could give two fucks about it. Uh, Complex actually reached out to Barbara Kruger and asked for her, for her opinion in regards to the lawsuit because I think everybody thought it was a little funny. Why is Supreme suing another company when they're obviously, you know, they took their design from somebody else. And here's Kruger's response. Let me just read it to you guys. What a ridiculous clusterfuck of totally uncool jokers. I made my work about this kind of sadly foolish farce. I'm waiting for all of them to sue me for copyright infringement. Damn, fuck you Supreme from Barbara Kruger. To be honest, I think Barbara Kruger is more Supreme than Supreme. Like her aesthetic is synonymous with Supreme's aesthetic. They are exactly the same. Um, I would say Barbara's is much more elevated and sophisticated because Supreme is the derivative of Barbara Kruger's work. If you like Supreme's work, you are naturally inclined to like Barbara Kruger's work. Now, if you like Barbara Kruger's art, you may not be inclined to like Supreme because it's just derivative. But if you like Supreme, you definitely like Barbara Kruger. So the aesthetic is the same. But also, Kruger's art, it stood for anti-capitalism, uh, fuck the man, philosophical pillars to like the skate world and the punk world. And I would argue that Barbara Kruger's art is all about that life, evidenced by her work. Supreme, on the other hand, is all about capitalism. In 2020, they were acquired for $2.1 billion. $2.1 billion, that is pro-capitalism. Joining us now to discuss the deal and more is CEO Steve Rendell. Uh, nice to have you, Mr. Rendell. You know, um, in the reading I've done here about Supreme, the street brand that we've mentioned, they put their name on a $10 t-shirt and they can sell it for 200. Sounds like a great business. And they were acquired by a company called ZF Court, which owns like Timberland, uh, Vans, North Face. So if you've ever wondered why there were so many North Face Supreme collabs, now you know, it's owned by the same company not really a collab if you think about it. But I am a kid from the 90s and Supreme will always hold a special place in my heart. Uh, yeah, it's, it's no longer a, a skate shop clothing line, but that box logo, 
it remains iconic and it's simplistic barbara kruger influenced design it's beautiful it catches the eye from everyone whether you're a skater to an old dad like me and if you're gonna steal you should steal from the best you slap this logo on anything as i mentioned earlier i'm likely to buy it i am a collector at the end of the day and although i've made this strong case that supreme is a sellout no longer the indie skate brand that they used to be. I still think that their creative design, to this day, I think there's still that spirit of disruption and rebellion and youth culture. Love them or hate them, I still think Supreme is super dope. Let's get to this haul. Wow, this huge box. And what is this? This is a work light and power bank. Yes, that's exactly what it does. Very cool. It's got this cool clip here, right here in the back, so you can clip it to your belt because it's a work light. There you go. Cool. I can use this like when I film at night. Oh, and there's a red light too. There's the red light. But also, it seems like, uh, yes, you can charge your phone or something like that. Comes with a USB-C power plug. All right, I'm sure I will find some use for this. What did I tell you guys? You slap the Supreme box logo on something, I'm gonna buy it. Supreme Hanes. I don't think Hanes makes the best white tees, but I just love how they have their Supreme box logo at the bottom of these things, so. Get yourself some underwear, relatively inexpensive. Stella, my daughter, she loves to draw. She's. I, don't, I can't say she's an incredible artist because she's obviously only six and uh, it's pretty still like elementary level. But I would say at her level, it's pretty good. She's a really creative person. She loves drawing, she loves painting. So I picked this up for her. And this is a Supreme watercolor set. Wow, this is great. Look at this, it comes in this beautiful tin box right here. This must be some kind of holder, maybe like you're supposed to hold it like this while you paint. Let's open it up. All these colors, that is beautiful, look at this. It's incredible. Got all the different colors here. Obviously these little plates right here so you can mix the colors together. This is probably for your brush. I am not an artist myself, but I'm sure April can explain to me what this is all for. And they collab with a brand called Bushimaneke. I can't tell if there's an F or what in the front there, but for all you artists out there, let me know in the comments. So April always carries a massive tote bag in her car. I saw this tote bag. I was like, you know what? I think instead of carrying like a big old blue Ikea tote bag, why don't you carry a massive Supreme one? And this is the bag. So she can look like a cool housewife, you know? There's also a big strap here. It's a cool clip too. Easy to use with the box logo. I like getting the accessories in red or white and red. I feel like the, those are the true colors of Supreme. And she can hold it like this and bring up all those groceries to make me yummy, yummy meals. All right, I don't know when, but Supreme started making double XL probably because oversize became cool, I think. Wasn't even that long ago. I think the largest size they offered was XL, which always made me a little sad because when I buy the box logo shirts, they used to be slightly just not the way I want them to fit because I'm long and gangly. But now that there's double XL, I'm all about it. They call this the property label short sleeve top. Supreme property, Supreme Co. Limited. First thoughts for a double XL. Sleeves still don't hit my elbows. It's not the highest quality, it's actually very thin, but you have to remember that these clothes are made for athletes. They are intended for skating, so it makes a lot of sense that this would be very lightweight. Not that Supreme doesn't make more heavyweight materials, but this particular shirt is on the thinner side. It feels more like an undershirt than a, than a shirt that you would wear over. But I like the clean, I like the clean, simplistic stuff. Just the box logo things, it caught my eye, so I picked it up. I like it, matches my hat. This one is called the Washed Capital. And this, yeah, it's like a kind of, um, it's a little bit more creamy. And this is a much different material, much more heavyweight, feels better, feels more substantial. And I know I said I usually buy it in white or red, but I picked the blue one of this 
capital shirt. On the cream, it kind of gave me some Penn State vibes. I liked it. This shirt feels very good. This one feels different than the property one for sure. And it's still light enough. So you want to go skate, it's not going to be a problem. And the Supreme logo right here is, it's embroidered. Very nice touch. I like it very much. This is a mock neck and it's a long sleeve. I thought about getting a double XL, but I was like, it might be too big. But you know, Yeezy's made too big, not too big. And it's getting to be that type of uh, weather here in Atlanta. That fall weather's finally hit. We're getting our cold fronts in. So a nice mock neck would look cool. And I just love the way that they did the Supreme logo on here. Oh yeah, that feels good. You know what, I'm glad I went with the XL instead of the double XL. You can really wear it with anything. That's kind of like how I like to keep my closet. Just be able to throw this on, probably throw some essentials, fear of God. I mean, I'm wearing essentials joggers right now. And like it all makes sense together but this mock neck is very nice i could see myself playing golf like this tiger tiger woods y'all all right so the crew necks and the hoodies they always kind of like mess with me in terms of like the size i wanted a more tailored look for this crew neck so i went with a large oh yeah i'm glad i got a large gives me kind of pe vibes from high school it's a nice heather gray color i'm not sure if that's what it's actually described as but to me when i look at it, it looks like heather gray very PE. Love the small logo there. This is just an everyday casual crew neck. Doesn't matter where you're, where you're from, how old you are, what you like to do, what you don't like to do. You can wear this sweater. Love hoodies. You'll never have too many of them. Collect them all the time. This is not a box logo hoodie, but again, clean design. Okay, so this one's gonna be, uh, this would be something that I would consider to be a little bit more louder, at least for me. It's still kind of toned down. Just Supreme right there, no crazy print or anything. And it is in black. I don't always just get the box logo stuff, but when I do get stuff that's not box logo, I do like to keep it clean. It goes with everything. Okay, instant reaction. They feel great. Um, I normally wear a size 32 with Levi's. Um, so I bought 32. I, I should have bought a 30 because it's got some extra room right here. However, I think the 32 makes it really cool and baggy. And there's a reason for belts. But I just love how this outfit goes together. It's so casual, very chill. Here's the belt. There we go, throw the belt on, everything looks great. That's how it looks, as you can tell. It's got a 90s flavor to it. I'm very happy with these jeans. All right, this is the Indigo in the Slim, which kind of fits a little bit more narrow here in the thighs, but it's, it's not a skinny jean. Plenty of room in these as well. I love the color of this denim, it looks great. Interestingly enough, I guess because this is the slim version, it's actually 32 fits me just right. I can tell you this already from the indigo jeans. There's like a million buttons up here. It was very hard to button them because the, the jean is so rigid. My fingers have turned slightly blue. So I would probably wash it once, maybe twice and try to get that that dye out of it because if you wear like white Air Force Ones, this dye from this denim is going to bleed all over it. I'm afraid it's about to do it to all these white shirts that I just bought, so I'm about to take these off. But in terms of feel, look, it's dope. All right, look, so I gave in. I opened up the Hanes just so that you guys can see. This video is about box logos anyway, so I figured I'd open it up. Box logoed out right now. I would not leave the house dressed like this. Um, I'm just, this is just for the vlog. All right, the final thing. You guys know what this is. I don't like all the skateboards that they make. I'm more of a fan of, you guessed it, the box logo stuff. Another sticker, Halloween. But come on, Supreme. You know I love collecting your stickers, so. How could you send it to me like this? It's all folded up and messed up, you guys. Not cool. Who wants a sticker like that? That's terrible. Supreme box logo t-shirt design skateboard. I believe that's what it is. It looks like it's supposed to be a box logo t-shirt that's been folded. I have the uh, 25th anniversary edition uh, box logo skateboard, but that's the skateboard that I actually skate on, so it's pretty beat up. I kind of want to buy another one. So whenever I see the box logo stuff like this, I typically tend to try and pick it up. And I thought this was kind of interesting that 
you know, it's not the actual box logo, but an image of a shirt that's folded up. Or maybe it's lame and I don't have any taste. Who knows? Hey, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and just kind of listening to me rant on about Supreme box logo, its history, its controversy, why I like it, and going through this haul with me. I can't believe how much the channel has grown this year. It's been amazing to watch this really dope community build around my channel. And I wanna let you know, I appreciate every single one of you guys, because it's extremely motivational. It's really inspiring, because usually throughout the day, my work day is so fucked. As an attorney, it's just one problem after another after another. My job is to solve those problems. So by the time I get home, I'm just like on edge, like ready to blow. And when I come home and I see like the comments from you guys, the DMs from you guys are like, oh, this video is great. You know, thanks so much for posting this. You have no idea how relieving it is to, to know that there is a community of people out there that actually give a fuck about me and this channel. And I'm just like, yeah. I had a tough day, but it's totally worth it. And I've got all these dope people behind me, rooting me on, and just helps me get through the night, gets me ready for the next day. And I appreciate you guys so much. Let's keep this channel growing, so hit that subscribe button, hit the like, keep dropping comments, and I'll see you guys next time, all right? Peace. All right, so here we are at altitude where we have to sign a waiver in case we get injured. Just so that you know, there is already a defense of assumption of risk. So even if you did hurt yourself here and you didn't sign a waiver, you really wouldn't have a personal injury case because you assume the risk of injuring yourself. You might, you might sprain an ankle while you're jumping on trampolines. It's kind of like when you play basketball, you go to a basketball court, you kind of assume the risk of knowing that you might get a sprained ankle, you might lose an ACL while you're playing on the basketball court. You can't sue the court, the gym, the park because you injured yourself playing basketball. It's really no different here. However, if they are negligent in the maintenance of their equipment and you injure yourself due to that, well, it doesn't matter that you signed this waiver, you still have a cause of action against the premises owner. Just a little attorney info for you. Time to sign our life away.